Welcome to today's coffee lecture. My name is Andre Kilian, and our topic today is Scopus. Scopus is a literature database run by the publishing house Elsevier. Um, it has about 90 million publications, scientific publications from a curated list of sources. Here at ETH Zurich, you have the luxury that you can access not only one licensed database, but three. Besides Scopus, there's also Web of Science and Dimensions. They all have their look and feel and some pros and cons. So it's a good idea to give each of them a try and see which of them best suits your uses. I will show you the database in a live demo. When you use Scopus, it looks like this. Um, you have a search field. You can add as many search fields as you want and connect them by Boolean operators and or and not. And there's a lot of fields that you can search in. The standard option is article title, abstract, and keywords so that you get results where your um, search terms appear. But you can also look, for example, for a specific affiliation, for funding information, for CAS numbers, and there's even a lot more under advanced document search if you want to get really specific. You can do um, phrase searches using uh, quotation marks, and it's also possible to do proximity search. You can use wildcards. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, I recommend you to check out the documentation because we don't have time to get into all of these details today, but the options are definitely there. When you are logged in, uh, you can save searches. I show that now. I have two examples. Uh, the um, advantage when you, you when you do this is you can access searches again later, and you have an option to only display new results that have been added since you last ran this search. And you can also set an alert. That means uh, you can get regular email updates, um, giving you a list of new publications that have been recently added to the database. So if you want to keep up to date in a specific field or on a specific journal, for example, this is a good way to do it. You can get weekly, daily, or monthly alerts. So I show you one example of a search. This is a title search, and I look for huge or giant robots. There's not a lot of documents, but there's a few. And um, when you have a search result, on the left side, you have options to um, further narrow down your results by different filters. And you can click on each result to get details on each article on the authors, also on the metrics, how often have, the, have they been cited? And if available, there's also funding information. So you can get um, a lot of information here. Also, um, you can get lists uh, of documents that cited these articles. There's um, a browser plugin that you can install. It's the Scopus, what's it called? Scopus Document Download Manager. And that enables you to click on this download button. And it will look for all full text PDF files that you have access to. And you can then directly save them on your hard drive. It's usually not all, not all of them, but a lot. And then you get a list of which documents could be downloaded and which couldn't. You also have the possibility to export your search results in different formats. So you can, for example, uh, get BibTeX citations and enter them in your LaTeX document, or you can export it to reference management softwares and continue working there with, these, with this data. Let's have a look at my next example from my saved searches. So 
So this is a search for articles on NMR spectroscopy in German or English with author affiliation at ETH Zurich published after 2017. Um, you have the possibility to get a citation overview so you can get information how often has this set of publications been cited. And it's also possible to get lists of um, all articles that have cited at least one of uh, the articles in this list. And also the other way around, you can get a list of all the references that have been used by these 178 documents. Obviously, this will quickly blow up the number of your search results. So um, this is something you can use if you have a large scale analysis or review project. Over here, you have analyze results where you can gain further insights. So you can see when have these documents been published. You get a graph for the journals where these documents have been published and a lot of further information. And all of these graphs are interactive. So you can click on them and then get a narrower uh, selection of documents. Scopus gives you access not only to information on the publications, but also on the authors. For example, we could click here on Mr. Copere, and we get again a profile with a lot of analytical information on his publication activity. Um, this is very useful, obviously, for your own uh, research, for your own publications, if you already have some, um, and also for um, maybe your supervisors or for important people in your field. You can follow them and you can also, again, set alerts to get notifications when there's something new. There's also uh, this function called sources. Here you can find information on specific journals. You can, for example, select a subject area. You have here a, a huge list of different subjects and each journal is uh, assigned at least one of these subjects. So for example, we take electrochemistry and get a list of important journals in this field with uh, citation metrics. And again, we can narrow down this set and for example, only display open access journals. So if you're looking for a place to publish your research, this can be a useful tool. Another feature I want to show you is the researcher discovery that you can find up here. Here you can enter a keyword, for example, radiochemistry, and get a list of authors whose publications feature this keyword. Um, again, you can filter like always. Let's take Switzerland. And now you see um, people here in Switzerland who have published in the field of radiochemistry. Uh, you can see who has the highest age index, for example. Um, this can be a useful way to find uh, possible collaborations. And finally, our time is almost over, but I want to quickly show you the Scopus AI. This is a very new feature. It's currently in beta version. And ETH Zurich is one of a few institutions worldwide that currently have access to this feature. Um, it is still in development, so something may still change. And the beta only runs till November 6. So you have a few days left to try this out. It works similar to ChatGPT with the important difference that the sources for the information is uh, the material available in Scopus. Let me show an example. What are applications of crystallography in drug discovery and development? So it can be any free text question. 
obviously it should be something uh, research relevant and it only um, uses documents published since 2018. So not very useful for historical information, but for current up-to-date information. And it gives you a short summary answering your question like you are like you know from ChatGPT uh, and other tools like this. And it also gives you sources where this information comes from. So you can click on these references and directly get um, the article where this information comes from. There's also a visualization feature, which gives you a graph, which is sometimes more and sometimes less useful if it shows up here. Um, Yes, uh, so it gives you some keywords and connections between them. I'm not really sure if the colors have any meaning, but um, yeah, maybe this will be more obvious in the future. And this down here is also very um, useful. You get follow-up questions, which you can just click and uh, a new query will be run. So you can uh, go step-by-step step and discover more about this subject. So try this out as long as you still can. I think the full version is um, planned to start in 2024, um, but it's already very interesting to play with it now. And you can also give feedback to shape the development of this feature. So that was the last thing I showed you. Um, are there any questions about Scopus, anything? You would like to know you can enter something in the chat or unmute yourself there's no questions i will paste the link to the digital coffee lecture card in the chat those here in the room can pick one up and you are welcome to join us again tomorrow for the last lecture in this series which will be held by oliver ren and he will show you different preprint platforms where you can discover very new cutting edge publications um, before they have been peer reviewed, which um, can be useful when you want to get very, very new information. So that's my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Have a good day and bye-bye.